Hey guys, Jared here, Magnetic Men's Club. Hope everyone's doing well. Today's video entitled Pay to Play. A little bit of play on words, but what it basically means is every man has to pay in one way or another to get access to women, i.e. sex. In case you haven't realized this, if you're watching this, most men seek sex from their partners. That's the glue for men that keep a relationship together. And sex is amazing, but that's not specifically what women seek. See, you have to understand two very different things. What women want from men is their time, their attention, their efforts, their commitment to them, their money. They have a fucking list of probably, it's still going today, five or six million different things that they want from men. Men, we want sex. Now, I'm not saying that's the only thing we want because our criteria is a little bit more than that, but I want to keep this as basic as possible. Women seek a man's attention, his provisioning, his, uh, his money, which is also provisioning. They seek a lot more for men. And so you have to look at the opportunity cost for us to give up all of these things just to get sex is a cost. Besides the actual money on dates and all these things, everything else, the biggest cost you actually have especially the more successful you get is your time. So the more time you invest into a woman, the more provisioning you give her, the more of your attention you give her, lets her know that you're in a relationship with her, lets her feel safe about the relationship and allows her to give you what you want, which is sex. But again, it's all at a cost. Now I'm not advocating for this, but let's flip it to the other side. Let's say a man hired a hooker. The more transactions that are involved generally, the cheaper that thing is. So again, I'm gonna use a prostitute. Yes, a man has to put out money but what does he not have to do? He doesn't really have to talk to her. He doesn't have to listen to her stories. He doesn't have to, you know, buy her, buy her dinner and all this. He basically pays for sex. It's a value exchange. Yes, it's, a, it's not great sex, but it's good enough for these particular men to get their needs met. And so even though that hooker might cost two, three, four thousand, I, I don't know what you know your type of hooker is, but even though that there's a cost to it, it's a one-time cost and he can go on his way. So women, you have to understand when a man wants to be in a relationship with you or is agreeing to be in a relationship with you, he's giving up way more than time. He's given up a lot more to be into that relationship. And so this is what we're going to talk about today. And it costs a man everything. It costs him basically his entire life to build himself up in order for him to get sex. So I'm gonna use another example. Let's say a guy goes up to a pretty girl and asks her out. We're gonna say they're in their 30s, okay, great. Goes up to a girl, asks her out. He has the confidence, he has the swagger, he's got a little bit of money. All of these things cost him something to do that. Women just think, oh my God, he just asked me out, that's amazing. Do you know how many no's he had to get do you know how many uh, maybe breakups he had to go through? Do you know how much crap he had to do in order to get that confidence, in order to get a little bit of that swagger, in order to get um, those balls to go up and talk to you and ask you out? See, it doesn't matter in this society how women say they're independent, how women say they can do everything a guy can do. The one negotiation that they refuse to do is make the initial contact. Most women will not go up to a guy and ask him out. Most women feel that that's a man's role. That's really the only thing they're never, they, they're not changing about society. They still expect a man to ask a girl out. Will you marry me? 
maybe there's kids. There's all of these things that men are expected to do. And I get it. If a woman goes up to a guy, women do not like rejection. So if the guy says no, then her ego is going to be more bruised than if a guy walked up to a girl and she says no, because we've all been there. We've asked women out tons of different times. We've gotten rejections. We've gotten no's. We're just used to it. So I understand why that one thing, women are not willing to give up. They're expecting a man to put in that type of effort. And I get it, that's great, but there's a cost to it. The higher the level of the man he is, the more work he had to do to get to that level. And we're gonna talk about this chart in a minute. The lower the level of a man is, means he hasn't put enough effort, he hasn't put enough time into himself to increase his value, to make you even want to go out with him. So this video we're gonna talk about it doesn't matter if you're a billionaire or a bum. There's still a value that women and society place on these guys. And as I said, the higher value a person is, the more choice they have with women. Women have two criteria when they're looking for a relationship. And I'm going to back up one step and say not every woman all the time is looking for a relationship. It's more true than not, but it's not always true. And we're gonna explain the why in a minute. Likewise, not every man always wants sex. If that was the case, every single guy would all want sex with every girl he sees, and that's just not the case. Our standards are pretty low but we do have standards. For me, I don't date overweight people. I generally don't date um, women that are my age or older. I just don't see the need to it. So I have certain things for me personally, and they are a standard. That's what I don't do. So the idea that all men want just sex from all women is not accurate. It's more true than not, but it's still not accurate. Just like not all women want a relationship. So what does all this mean in the sexual marketplace value? It means that no matter who you are in this pecking order, you could be Steve Jobs, you could be Bill Gates, and whoever the hell these rich people are, you can have all the money in the world, you can have tremendous value but you might not have the second part, which is attractiveness. Likewise, you can be very attractive, but you might not have as much value. So this is how women do mate selection, not necessarily relationships, but this is how they do what's called mate selection. Now let's get into this. So we talked about a lot of videos on what a high value man is, what the attributes of a high level man. So we're gonna talk about the two attributes, number one. We're gonna talk about value and we're gonna talk about attractiveness. Somebody who's of high value generally is LinkedIn level. People can see what he does, know what he's about. I'm a doctor, an attorney. I'm a CEO at this company. They have social proof to some degree. They have money generally. Somebody who has high value generally has a higher net worth than most of the people. They have influence, typically that they're CEO of a company, uh, they have lots of responsibility, they have all of this influence in whatever social circle they have or whatever business or industry they have in. Maybe they're well known in their community or maybe they actually give a lot of money and a lot of time and their resources to their community. And it's also part of their character. I've done a video on that as well. So there's different subsects of high value, but we're just gonna use that this guy has it all. He has money, he has social status, he has, he's a 10 on value. Okay, he has it all. Now we're gonna talk about attractiveness. Now this person has looks. Now, I use looks as a general because not every woman finds the exact same guy attractive. But we're gonna use attractiveness as most women 
would find this guy attractive, okay? Everybody's got their little thing, I get it, but we're just gonna say he's, he is a generally considered an attractive man by most women. Maybe he's taller. I know there's this thing, women want a guy who's six foot tall and all this stuff, but he has some height to him. He's, he's in that top 12% of men who are six foot tall or more. Physicality, he takes good care of himself. He's not a fat ass. He takes good care of himself. He eats well, all of that stuff. And he also has a great personality. He might have strong charisma. He might be a little bit funny, but he has a good personality. These are two different people. We talked about, say, somebody like Bill Gates. Bill Gates is ugly as fuck, but he's got billions of dollars. So he has extremely high value. He does not very good looking. Elon Musk, you could argue that He's a little bit unique looking, but he's not an ugly guy. Doesn't really take good care of himself, but he has tremendous high value. So he is semi-attractive with massive value. Okay, do you see the difference? And this is how women are going to view relationships with four different types of person. Now the first person is a 10 or eight, nine or 10, whatever, on attractiveness, he's a very good looking person, takes good care of himself, dresses well, eats right, is strong, and he, on his value side, he has some money, maybe he runs a company, could be a high-end doctor, whatever. He's way up there on both. This is where women look for. They want this type of guy. And sadly, there's only about 10% of these, 10% of men fit this bracket, okay? It's reasonable to assume that most women are pining for this guy, but there's not a lot of them. So what happens? These guys have built themselves up to the type of man they wanna be. They've made the money, they've worked out. Most of the time, these guys don't wanna be in a committed relationship because they have choice. Now, they built themselves up. Maybe they're in their mid-30s and they finally got to this level. Why would they want to settle with one girl when they don't have to? They have choice. So all of these women are pining for this guy and he has the ability, because their attractiveness is so high, his pay to play is so cheap. He doesn't have to do much. They already want him. He already knows that. These type of women want a relationship, but they will settle just for access to him, just for sex. Some women don't mind if he dates other women. Some women don't mind if he even agrees to marry them that he is gonna do what he's gonna do and they're completely fine with that because they understand he has both of the attributes most women look for in a man. This is only about 10% of the population. 10% of the guys can get away with this, but they've generally paid the most early on for these opportunities. They went to the gym when they were younger. They didn't settle on a job. They built a company. They've built themselves up into this type of guy. So they've already paid on the back end to kind of enjoy what they have right now. This is about 10% of the guys. Now, you can be very attractive, but not much else. We're gonna go to the next subset of guys. These are the guys I talk about, Ray, Pookie, the Chads of the world. These are your players. These are the guys that can go into a bar, they have a good mouthpiece on them. They're very attractive. They might be very good looking. They might be you know, physically fit, awesome personality. They're right at the height that women want. The women desire these guys, but not for a relationship. They sport fuck them. So what happens is women will have sex with these guys, one night stands, maybe 
very short term relationships because but because they have no value they might not even have a freaking job or they might be working dead end jobs they might be an alcoholic for Christ's sakes women won't take them serious enough to want to be in a relationship with them but they're hot enough to have sex with them i don't know what the statistics on it of how many of these guys are out there but this kind of proves that not all women want a relationship with all men. They're using these guys and these guys are using them for sex, basically, entertainment. Maybe just to have a good time and, and forget about life, whatever. You also have, like we talked about, say somebody like Bill Gates. They have massive value. They have money, social status, influence, all of these things, they have it all in spades, so they're way out here, but we're gonna put them below a five. Five would be considered, you know, your average guy, whatever, you're a five, five or six. We're gonna put them around a three, yeah, four or five. They're average good looking, maybe they're a little bit overweight. They're just average, they're plain, okay? You don't necessarily find them very attractive, so what do these guys have to do? If the ones who've done it right, they had to build their value in order to compensate for their decreased attractiveness. Does it make sense? So for a woman to get in a relationship with this guy, he has to pay with maybe more money, his provisioning, maybe you know his influence, his social status. Why do you think you see these old men dating or married these super hot young women? Do you think the women find them attractive? Fuck no. It's with their money, their value, their social status. This is why they're with them. And it's just an exchange. They view it both primarily as a business exchange. This type of man, women will settle for a relationship. And I don't like to use the word settle, especially on a woman's side. Usually men settle for women, but they will get into a relationship with this guy, but they're gonna have very limited sex. And when the sex happens, it's gonna be very plain, very manila, maintenance sex, duty sex. They're not really gonna have passion for this guy. So this guy actually has to pay way more for the opportunity that this guy has to get access to those types of women that he wants, okay? Because he doesn't have the attractiveness. He doesn't maybe have the personality or that physicality. Now, he can certainly get those, and he can work on his looks. He can't do much about his height, but he can work on these. But I've often found that guys who are very successful in one area tend to not be as successful in others. They let their body go. They're kind of really good when they talk business, but when they're talking, talking to a girl, they sort of retract. They're just, they haven't done the work. Not certainly like this guy did. So these types of women, where most women need to settle, understand that this is the type of guy that they're going to have to get only because there's just not enough of these guys. Maybe, I, and I'm probably being generous, about 20% of the population could be a little bit more kind of fall off into this. Now, these are typically guys who, when women get a little bit older, Guys, got to understand, you're their second or third or fourth choice, okay? Typically, these guys are more on their beta side. They, uh, again, they may have, they might be alphas in business, but in their own personal life, they usually bow down because this pretty girl even likes them enough to date them. They'll do anything for her, and women are pretty good at that, and they understand that, so... They'll enter into this agreement, they'll enter into this relationship, but they're still pining for this top 10% guy. And if an opportunity arose because they have hypergamy, they will take advantage of this. If the opportunity arose where another man who is higher value, higher in attractiveness wants to be with her, she will drop these guys 
and go with them. They're hypergamous by nature, this is why. So we have roughly 30%, I'm just gonna call these guys, I'm gonna throw them in the 10. So there's about 30% of the population who, you know, this is what women can kind of choose from. And here's the sad part. If you have no value, you haven't built yourself at all, you haven't built a company, you're not a doctor, you haven't done any work on yourself, you're not attractive, you haven't done anything as far as your physicality or personality, and you're way down here, this is where women find most of the men. Most of the men, 80%, 70 to 80%, of all women find these men completely invisible. These are the guys who are 30, 40 year old working at Starbucks or McDonald's or washing their car. These guys have checked out of life basically. Something happened in their past, something happened where they've just given up on life, they've checked out and you're close to about 70% of the population. And I'll be fair, I'm gonna throw this one up. We'll say it's 60%, 50%, whatever you wanna call it half of the population. So if there's 160 million men and half of them have checked out of the dating pool and they're accessing you know, prostitutes and they're accessing porn and OnlyFans, they've completely checked out of this, this dating thing. They're completely gone. This is what you have left. This is what I talk about for a man for access to sex, it costs you money. I don't care if you buy a hooker or you get into a relationship. We just talked about getting into a relationship actually costs more money for a man than just getting into buying a hooker. So I need you to understand this. Figure out, I'd like to hear in your comment sections, figure out where you are and be honest about it. If you're in your top 10%, chances are you're not even watching my videos because you're trying to level yourself up. If you're already here, yeah, you might recognize my videos, but you don't really need much education. You've gotten this figured out. You know why? Like I said before, you've done all the hard work very early on in your life to get to this level. Maybe a really good looking guy and, and you can go into a bar and within reason pick up most women and sport fuck them. Well then you're a Chad, you're a Tyrone, you're a Ray Ray, you're just a really good looking guy, but maybe your value isn't is where it should be, where you know it should be. Maybe you don't care, maybe you do. Well, if you could get your value up, man, you could be into this top 10% if you want a relationship or if you want the option to have a relationship. If you're a man in this and you have massive value, but you're a little bit ugly, you're a little overweight, you're kind of like a social retard, you can do things to get you closer to this level. You can get to the gym. We always talk about going to the gym. You can eat better. You can learn social dynamics. You can learn how to talk to women so that you're not completely shitting yourself when they say hi to you. You can level yourself up to get into a position where your opportunity costs become lower because you've increased your value. And again, sadly, if you're like 60 or 70% of the men that are out there and you've completely checked out, you're not even trying to date, you might even be a little bit of incel, you might be black pill, you might be the doom and gloom, like, oh, no woman will want me, blah, blah, blah. You're exactly right because it's your attitude that you have. Your attitude is keeping you sexless. Your attitude is keeping you from finding a relationship. Hope this video makes sense. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Hit like, hit subscribe. That bell icon is someplace up here so you know when new videos are being dropped. If you are looking to get more information on this, looking for ways to level yourself up, maybe you're even going through a divorce right now and this became foreign to you. Maybe you're in a divorce right now and she left your ass for one of these guys, or she left your ass for a Tyrone or Pookie or Ray Ray, and you're like, what the fuck, I'm a good guy, I got money, I wanna help you level yourself up. With that, have a great day, we'll talk soon, bye.